compact discs were the result of a 1982 collaborative effort by Philips and Sony. The intent was to introduce a new way to listen to music, and the CD or digital audio compact disc did not fail to impress for over two decades. However, the popularity of CDs has steadily declined since the mid to late 2000s when digital audio devices such as the iPod, streaming applications like Napster, and many other digital media platforms were pioneered for the avid listener. According to the Recording Industry Association of America, CD sales are only 10% of what they were in the 1990s. Like any other form of technology, the way music is delivered to its audience simply evolved. That evolution has fundamentally changed the landscape and relationship between the artist and their fans. Music streaming services now account for over 85% of the US recorded music market. In this video, I will be addressing the five most important reasons why CDs should make a comeback. Don't forget to wait till the end because I will be addressing comments that were made on an article I wrote exactly on this topic from my website that has gotten quite a bit of attention. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel, smash the like button because we are diving right in. Here are five reasons why the compact disc should make a comeback. The artists are the reason we have music to listen to. Aside from endorsements and live performances, artists primarily make their income from royalties paid to them for units sold, distributed, used in media, or monetized in any way. Those royalties are then split between the songwriters, publishers, record labels, and of course, the recording artists themselves. Those are a lot of hands in the cookie jar. Deservingly so, because it takes a good team to produce a winning album. Most streaming services pay under a penny per stream of the artist's content. Successful YouTubers can make considerably more than that per view of their videos. Time and time again, fans are complaining that their favorite indie artists stop making music, but they don't stop to realize that they may not be able to afford to do so anymore. An indie artist who sells their CDs online or at their shows can make almost all profit from a CD they sell minus the cost of manufacturing. A signed recording artist can still pull 6 to 7 percent of retail value of the compact disc after everyone has taken their cut, which is significantly more than they can make from all the streaming services combined. If you love an artist and enjoy their music, purchasing their compact disc is not only a great way to support them fiscally, but also to own a physical piece of their work that you can enjoy with or without Wi-Fi. The nostalgia weighs in greatly when it comes to compact discs. If you were born in the late 80s, compact discs is how you listen to music. Whether you had an Iowa sound system or the freshest disc man, you knew your way of listening and you loved it. I could not tell you about the countless times I waited in line for a new release on a Tuesday morning or browsed for new titles at my local warehouse music. A classic music shop emanates a sense of nostalgia. I think often of the moments that I would walk into such shops and see the vintage music posters on the wall, the smell, the scent of Nag Champa incense, and look at the rows upon rows of CDs and vinyl records just waiting to be discovered. In my humble opinion, this is an experience that should not be denied to future generations. Now, the most important reason music has a direct relationship with nostalgia is a study that has been explored by many. When a person listens to a particular song from their past, it could trigger an implicit memory, which are memories stored deep in your unconscious mind, but can still be retrieved. Music tends to excite parts of the brain that evoke emotion, so it's reasonable to assume that music can have incredible benefits to people who just want to take a stroll down memory lane or actually help those who have trouble remembering experiences from their early lives. The sound quality of compact discs is still very well received and respected amongst even the most demanding of audio purists. Many vinyl collectors will contend that the quality of vinyl pressing from the 70s or a high quality remastered pressing will always, almost always be superior to the CD. 
However, with the recent cult following that vinyl has caused over the past several years, the prices of the albums have skyrocketed to profit from the demand. CDs are much less fragile than vinyl records. They are harder to scratch and they do not warp easily. You can get a much more consistent sound from a compact disc. You are just missing the ceremony that is attached to listening to vinyl. Compact discs offer a wider dynamic range and more bass response in vinyl. So unless you are a huge fan of the warmth of the analog sound or the slight imperfections that the character of the vinyl sound provides, the CD is superior in sound to that format. And I stand by that wholeheartedly. Many will tell you that the new high-res music available to stream from Tidal, like MQA, Quobuz, and Amazon HD are superior to compact discs. However, matching a quality CD transport with a proper high-end DAC, in some instances, can far exceed the sound experience provided by those streaming services. Don't get me wrong, I just did a video recently on streaming services and I absolutely love the convenience and think that the sound quality is promoted as better than CD in certain instances. However, my question to those who feel this way, have you tried matching a nice CD player with a great DAC? Could surprise you. Always trust your ears. If you are happy with streaming, then that should be the listening platform for you. The legendary CD mix, which took the place of the timeless mixtape, can still be found on the media storage racks or bookshelves of many Gen Xers and even some storage units or closets owned by older millennials. My good friend still has a case logic binder filled with pages and pages of CDs he had collected and or burned in his high school days. Mixes that crushes had given him, as well as road trip mixes when it was time to hit the road and listen to his favorite music. I understand. The technology and advancements have afforded us the convenience of playlists among all the music streaming platforms. However, digital playlists will likely never have the impact that handing someone a mixtape or CD with the emotion and intent behind the gesture had for those generations. The opportunity that lies ahead is clear and present. The music industry needs an influx of revenue. Artists need to make more from their hard work, and the youth of our nation could use a bit of variety in their daily music consumption. Imagine if CDs had the same resonance as vinyl is having with collectors today. It would be a feeding frenzy to find vintage titles from the 80s and 90s. Artists would be able to make music again knowing people would be enticed to buy their compact disc because it could very well be a collector's item someday. At the end of the day, I am a collector at heart, obviously. I love owning things that I am personally passionate about, as well as items that may be considered rare or unique. I think that everyone has a little bit of a collector inside of them. It's all about finding what you love and start collecting it. In my case, it's music, and the vehicle I chose was CDs. Let's be honest, vinyl is a rich person's drug if you're going full bore into creating a massive collection. But I digress. There would be an opportunity for graphic designers and visual artists to design the inserts and create the cover art. The artwork behind our current offerings of music streaming has become a bit of an afterthought, a little bland. I reminisce on leafing and reading through the CD booklet while the music of my newly purchased CD streamed through my headphones. Not to mention it will also create an opportunity for mom and pop stores to thrive and even start opening more brick and mortar music shops. It could mean the return of juggernauts like Sam Goody, FYE, Warehouse Music to every shopping mall. This venture could also benefit hi-fi companies who may be reluctant to make high-end CD players and CD transports because of the uncertain fate of physical media. However, with the comeback of CDs, those audio companies would not only be able to make CD players and DACs fast enough to quench the thirst of the mighty collector. Okay guys, here are a few excerpts from comments on my website that I found relevant and awesome. Jonathan expressed, finally, I'd emphasize that question of having a relationship with music. If it's a serious relationship you're after, you are simply not going to be content with Spotify or MP3s. If you're just after a casual fling, song of the week kind of thing, why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free or very cheap? That is the question that has not been answered. So 
I think having a relationship with music is important if you are a serious listener. It means you need to find a platform comfortable for your lifestyle and go all in. Brian commented, as a record producer and mixing engineer, I can state definitely that people who have only heard MP3 versions of their music don't have the least idea of how good the music is in uncompressed WAV file format that you hear in a studio. A CD is the closest you can get to that at a reasonable price. Hey, you're just hearing it from the source. That's all I got to say about that. And finally, Joe. He says, we still run very successfully two record stores in Wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania and Scranton, Pennsylvania called Joe Nardone's Gallery of Sound since 1970. I can go on and on about the sad and unbelievable state of affairs when it comes to record, record distribution. Okay, this has become an issue. Many companies just aren't distributing new music anymore. And it's sad because I would like to own many new artist albums. I applaud Joe for lasting the test of time and surviving this new digital age. I look forward to visiting one of his stories if I am ever in the area. However, here in Denver, we have an amazing store called Twist and Shout, which not only has new and used physical media, but also sells vintage hi-fi gear, which I, that's just downright rad. In closing, guys, only interest and time will tell if the CD just remains a relic of the past or if there is a new adventure that awaits this beloved and forgotten form of media. I can assure you one thing, I haven't forgotten. I am an avid collector and I will be campaigning for a resurgence of the CD with every fiber of my being. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel, smash the thumbs up, and hit the bell so you stay connected with me when I release new videos. I also have an awesome Facebook group called Hi-Fi Audio Enthusiasts, as well as a Patreon where you can support the channel in exchange for some cool behind the scenes stuff, a private Discord, and first dibs on some of the stuff I review. So details are gonna be in the description below. Thank you for watching, and you guys have an awesome day. I'm gonna go listen to some CDs, because I have them all. Not gonna lie, guys, this is one of my favorite albums I picked up recently. Super cool.